Welcome to the Peace Over Pain podcast with Dr. Kevin Reese, where we examine the body as a whole unit and move people from health burdens to health miracles. So get your questions ready, because the show starts now. Welcome to the Peace Over Pain podcast. I'm your host, Joe Lachance, and I'm here with the author of Peace Over Pain, Dr. Kevin W. Reese. Welcome, Dr. Reese, and how are you today? Happy New Day, Joe. Everything's good, man. Just uh, getting up, getting ready for these live events coming up here in Connecticut. Right, right. There's a lot of preparation involved in that, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. November 5th is we're up to 70 seats taken. Oh, great. So, great. you know, it's, it's a lot of preparation. What's funny about it is I never prepare what I'm going to say, but everything around it has to be prepared. Yeah. All the logistics are, or, or oh, yeah, yeah, a lot of logistics. Lot of yeah. Logistics. And then once you get up there, you just go with the flow, you know, you let the universe take over and you say whatever is need to be said. Absolutely. Right. Right. No, it's not the actual performance. It's, it's, it's the planning that yep. is, is what uh, takes time. But before we get started, I just wanted to remind people that we will be taking your questions in the second half of the show. So if you have a question for Dr. Reese, please leave them in the comments below and hopefully we will be able to get to them this week. So, um, all right, Kev. We have an interesting uh, topic this week. Uh, mm. We're going to be talking about joints and okay. not usually the joints that I'm used to talking about, but the, <laughs> <laughs> the, these. We're talking about these. Right. These are actual joints in your body. And, um, you know, it's quite topical because now is that time of year. And I even know, uh, you know, it's starting to get a little colder out. And, and you hear a lot of people saying, right, oh, my joints are aching now with the cold weather and uh, my arthritis is acting up, you know, and, you know, I want, and, you know, even when I lived in, in, you know, in a colder climate, I found that that would start to happen to me too. And, uh, you know, there are reasons for this and uh, there are ways that we can prevent it and ways that we can get some relief from it. But I wanted to just, um, you know, get right with the basics. What are the joints? What is their function? And what, you know, what do they do in the body? Uh, and how do they get inflamed? So all a joint really is, is two bones that are coming together. And it's attached by tendons, ligaments, but more so muscles. Right. And because otherwise, how would the bones stay together? And so the best metaphor I can give is carpentry. If you have two pieces of wood, two four by fours, let's say, you put them next to each other, they're just two pieces of wood next to each other. They got to connect. And so the carpenter has to put, you know, a latch on it and screw it in. And then now it's a joint. Now it can move and function. It could be a lever. It could be. Right. There are joints. hinge. Right. Right. And so our joints are like that. We have big ones, the eight load bearing joints. And that's what we use in postural therapy, right? That's our shoulders, our hips, our knees and our ankles, there's eight of them. But then we got little ones, you know, our yeah. fingers, Toes. you know, our, our carpal, our carpals, you know, our wrist, our, our feet, our little toes, we have all these little joints. And so we're full of them. And it's amazing how divinely designed we are to see, to see it. And so the muscles are what puppeteers the joints. Right. So, you know, my arm, for example, my elbow joint is moving right now because of multi 
joint muscles, also known as biarticular muscles. So there's a muscle attached here that's going all the way to this bone. This bone and this bone are different. Right. Right. Humerus radius. And they're connected by this, these muscles. There's a few of them. Same thing with our leg. It's our femur and our tibia. And then you got muscles going from here to here. And that's what helps us walk and move and sit and blah, blah, blah. Right. If we didn't have joints, joint, the joint stiff. is the, yeah, the joint is the intersection. Mm -hmm. Right. And in between it, we have the cartilage and some fluid. To keep it moving, to keep it lubed up. Otherwise, they would scrape against each other. You know, and these are, these are principles that work in like a car. Yep. where they have the ball joints, but in the ball joints, there's lubrication that keeps them moving so they can turn the tires and, and things mm -hmm. like that. And we have the same thing in our body. So besides the muscle connection, uh, there's also cartilage, which is like small connectors, right? Like micro connectors. And then there are lubricating fluids that go in between because joints are like little balls like there it is Cartilage right right in between there right yep and what happens is now we did the big root cause episode a few weeks ago right that's a big episode if nobody's heard it yet go listen to that one of the root causes is muscle dysfunction right so if you have muscle dysfunction, particularly in a biarticular muscle that overlaps bone one to bone two, this is going to put your joint out of alignment. It is going to unstabilize it. And when you walk through the world, with that misalignment, it starts to wear and tear at that cartilage. And at some point, you're going to get it so that, you know, it's either off or you start getting some bone on bone. Right. Even if it's over to the side a little <clears throat> bit, you know, and then the body and its divine wisdom says, we got to protect against friction. So it creates bone spurs, which are called osteophytes. And there's your arthritis. So well, otherwise known as osteoarthritis, because there's two types of arthritis. The other one is autoimmune. So that's a whole other show. <laughs> osteoarthritis is the joint arthritis. And that's coming from muscle dysfunction which is putting us out of alignment. It's amazing how much these muscles, this is why it's one of the six root causes. So if you were to say the root cause of joint pain and joint issues and things like you say, bone spurs, that was very enlightening to me because when I always used to hear the word bone spurs, I always thought that it was like pieces of bone that had chipped off. No. But no, it is something that the body actually produces yeah. to combat like wear and tear on the cartilage. Yeah. And I'm sure we'll do, I'm sure we'll do an episode on the feet somewhere down the line, but same thing with bunions, same thing with hammer toes, same thing with calluses. The body is just trying to protect itself. And so the, 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 the divine wisdom is amazing, but it also works against us. And right. it should be a red warning light saying, change, 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 change. And, but most people don't know what to change. That's the right. thing because right. it kind you don't, you know, a lot of these muscle dysfunctions, like you say, are very subtle. 
it's not something unless you did a P ray, unless you had somebody who actually looked at it, you wouldn't notice it yourself. Do you know what I mean? You wouldn't notice, oh, that's the reason why I'm having joint pain. Right. No, you wouldn't notice the muscle dysfunction you would have on your own. And that's why people just go along and, you know, they say, oh, it's because of aging. You know, uh, a lot of athletes suffer from joint joint pain and they get arthritis at an early age yeah. and that's you know that is that is for the same reason i'm assuming yeah yeah they're just out of alignment that's all it is that's all it is and then you know when the weather changes yeah that's what i wanted why is it different in the cold the atmosphere changes the what's it called the barometric atmosphere pressure right right, right. yeah and there's a pressure and that expands fluid. And so it's just a space issue, really. Mm -hmm. You only have so much space. And then, you know, if the fluid expands, it's just, you know, like a balloon, just creating more space. And so it just creates more pressure. Right. So but I don't think the cold per se is creating pain because cold is alkaline. Cold, actually, that's why you put ice on them. You know, you hit your knee, you put ice on it. Right, right. So it's not the cold per se, it's the pressure. Oh, the a it's... atmosphere pressure. Okay, so that's another reason why people... Uh... Now, you, you were talking about, you know, um, cartilage, okay? Now, let's say once somebody does do some damage to their cartilage, right? Mm. Uh, you know, they've, they've, you know they've, they've had this joint pain for a long time and and then they decide to start doing some postural therapy yeah. and, and they start fixing the problem. Does the cartilage rebuild itself or, or is it something nutritionally that you might have to add, let's say, to your diet? Is, is there certain nutrients that nourish the cartilage, create cartilage? I mean, what does it mean? We know bones are mostly calcium. What is, what is, what is something nutritionally that let's say you've already, you're starting to correct the problem, but you, there's damage. There's already some cartilage damage from the past. Can it be rebuilt? Yes, absolutely. And I did a whole webinar on it. It's on peaceoverpain.com for anyone that would like to see it in detail, but it's really a space issue combined with a nutrition issue. Yes. You need the proper nutrients. You get, need all 90 essential nutrients because you really need to get that connective tissue strong that, with soft tissue nutrients. Right. I don't like right. to spit the nutrients out that much. I just say soft tissue. You know, that's going to be your seleniums, your magnesiums and all that. Right. And so those will help build up the soft tissue. Right. And obviously have to get the muscles back in order. Once the, once the muscles become functional again, then the space will come back in that joint right now, the space is messed up. It's crunching this way, or it's like that, or because the muscles moving, right? Right. Cause muscles move bones. Bones right. don't move without muscles. So then once there's space and you're getting the right nutrients, cartilage will grow back the cartilage does grow back okay so that's good to know so it's it's not permanent damage no the medical monopoly considers it permanent right right now i i don't know if i mentioned this before but my brother had a, a hip replacement in his 40s mm. uh and and a hip is a joint you know yep. right the hip is a joint where that big ball that's like a major joint and your hips and are everything it's the same reason the cartilage was worn down. It was bone to bone. And, and there was just a lot, a lot of pain involved. Yeah. And, and it's the same with knee replacements, right? It's a similar thing where they'll, they'll take the medical monopoly. We'll see this damage and they'll, they'll take and put a whole brand new knee. Yeah. They turn in you there. into the Terminator. They put metal <laughs> in you. They just want to keep, you know, they want to make it so you can't, 
walk through the the thing at the airport, you know? Right. I don't right. even know why they have those things anymore because so many people are walking around with metal in them. We're we're being turned into robots. And like 80% of the time it's not necessary. You know, an athlete that you know tears something or some you know every every now and again you need the surgery but 80 percent of the time you don't it's muscle dysfunction and with postural therapy we can get that functional again create space then pump the nutrition in and and, and it repairs the hips big deal man it's yeah. a big deal uh, your pelvis is everything. Your pelvis is your middle ground. It's, it's your foundation to the entire body. You're, you're nothing without your pelvis. And then you have your femurs and your femurs go into the pelvis. So you can see, I have a pelvis right here. Right. So you see, there's you probably see there's little holes there on the bottom. Mm -hmm. and that's where your leg also known as, as a femur it sticks in and that's called the acetabulum and right it sticks in there and when they come together that's called a hip ah that's the hip right so the hip, the hip is is not like people it's not a it, body part no it's it's a joint it's, it's a, a joint. name for a joint pretty much right it's it's the pelvis being connected to the leg and now when they do a hip replacement, then what are they? They're really replacing that ball, right? Yeah. They're not, there's no other, you, like you say, the hip is not a, 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 a bone. And yeah, they're, 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 they're doing the same thing a carpenter does with wood. Change the hinge. Right. The, the two pieces of wood are the same, but they're changing the thing that connects it. Right. And so that's where people get the metal. They're actually putting a piece. Yeah, of And a hip replacement will have to be replaced again. Right. Because they don't do anything for the cartilage, right? The, the cartilage that is gone is they, gone. They have procedures. Right. They have procedures. What do they take cartilage from another part of the body and put it in there? Or? Yeah, they make holes. They, they drill holes to like create space and air because it's a space issue. You don't want bone on bone. No, of course not. So, you need something in between. Right. So they do have, they do have um, some procedures and that's all in that, in the webinar. It's quite complicated, but uh, the bottom line is you don't want it. You want to just fix your muscles and get the nutrition. Right. And it will, the body will correct itself. It will thank you. Thank you for finally waking up and doing this. I've been sending out the pain alarm for so long. Like, oh my gosh, thank you. You know, it's best to treat your body like a pet. Oh, you treat okay. your body like a pet. You take care of your pet, right? You feed it, you walk it, you know, you talk to it. Your body should be treated the exact same way that you would treat your dog or your cat. I got you. Okay. So, so let's go back to arthritis. Okay. So you talked about one form of arthritis, which mm -hmm. is osteoarthritis. Now, what is the difference? Is it just the name of classification of arthritis between just regular joint pain or, or, you know, something else, other kind of dysfunction? What, what is, what makes arthritis arthritis? It's the bone spurs. It is because there's much. also swelling. A lot of people complain. Yeah, of it's swelling. inflammation. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. It's, it's, inf it's inflamed by definition. It's inflamed joints. Okay. So what the arthritis is, is the inflammation that comes around the joints, which are dysfunctional because of muscle dysfunction. Yeah. And the body is creating bone spurs, which they call osteophytes. Right. They're just little bumps they're like bone pimples and that's the body almost pushing the other joint away like look chill it's, it's like pushing close. away 
you know, see, we know bone spurs is something we get on our feet, usually our heel. Right. And the same thing, same thing. It's pushing. It doesn't know that it's a floor or a ground. It's, you know, it's just, it just feels friction from something and it's pushing away. So it's creating space. Uh-huh. It's creating space. It, it's like um, this doesn't want to push up against this. So it creates something. <laughs> I'm using a pen, but you get the idea. It's creating right. something that creates space. Like, ah, you can't touch me anymore. Right, right. And that's what I think is important that your bones and muscle, your bones and joints are not designed to touch. No, because that's what makes them function. Even here, even here with the finger, you know, you got the metacarpal and the phalange, you know, there's two bones. This finger that you're looking at is two bones, three, one, two, three, actually. Right. Um, well, the actual finger is two. There's a bone here. Oh, that comes up. Okay, I got right. you. Right, right. That's a long bone. Yeah, I remember when I broke my wrist, they were showing me that. But the actual finger, you got two bones here. You got a metacarpal right. and a phalange. And so that's a joint. Oh. And because it's a joint, we can move it. I see. So you can get arthritis in your finger. A lot of people do. They always complain about their hands. Yeah. Yeah. And so, the, you know, if you, if you have something going on in your hands, it's automatically going to be a shoulder issue. You got dysfunction going on here, you know, muscles are complicated. You know, you've heard me say it a few times, there's seven, almost 700 of them. And you might be surprised to know that we as human scientists, and doctors, we only know half of them. Right. The other half, we don't even know because there's, it's impossible to study them because a corpse doesn't move. Mm, so, right. And you don't, you can't study them on living people. So you can, you can take a dead person, a corpse, and you can dissect it and you can find all seven, 700 muscles, but you have no idea how some of them function because the person's dead. So you don't know how they were moving. You don't know how they were operating. It's that By the complicated. time you get to them, they're laid out and probably in pieces already. <laughs> it's so complicated. Your pelvic floor, you know, in your private area, you know, so complicated. And we're talking about like this much muscle, you know, like right. this, it's incredible. And the medical monopoly just, I mean, even though they have people that they say are joint specialists and, you know, what they call them, osteopaths and, and there's another one of them, orth, orthopaths or whatever, they all have these different specialties. Orthopedic surgeons. Yeah, right. But none of them really know. I mean, they know, obviously, they got to know the basic knowledge that muscles make the bones move. But none of them really know the details of why, again, it's the same thing. Why, do, what is the cause of the symptom? Right. Like if somebody comes in with a bunion. Right. They're going to cut the bunion. They're going to do a procedure on the bunion, but that person's going to get another bunion. Because and it's they because never of the way they're walking. The, they never got to the root cause. Right. And it's they, the same thing with arthritis. Same thing, right? They're yeah. going to just, the arthritis, people accept it. You know, it's, uh, they, they own it. Oh, my, my arthritis, my arthritis is acting up. They accept it now as a part of life, not realizing that they could definitely change it. They could change it. You need some heavy nutrition. Arthritis technically would be in the hard, hard tissue category because it's the bone spurs. Right. So now you now said there were two types. What is the other type of arthritis? The other type of arthritis is autoimmune. The most famous being rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. Rheumatoid. Okay. That's when, that's when the body attacks the joints and inflames them. 
So that's an autoimmune thing, which is going to come from leaky gut. It's going to right. come from digestive at the root cause, gut dysfunction at the one, root one cause. One of the six root causes. One of the six root causes. And, you know, the other one is like lupus. Hmm. Lupus is like a systemic autoimmune issue, like the whole body. And so it's got shades of everything. Lupus is not something you want. It's, it's a miserable life. And that, again, that comes from gut, leaky gut. Is that the origin of it? Yeah. Starts with gut dysfunction. Yep. Okay. And then, of course, you know, there are ways nutritionally and posturally yeah. to correct that as well. Yeah. I mean, I just had someone just a week or so ago, digestive issues put her on the protocol. The supplements didn't even get to her doorstep yet. I just had her change the diet off the poor four foods. I put her on a digestive diet and did some salty water every other day. Mm -hmm. Stomach started correcting itself in a week. The supplements haven't even got there yet. Right. So it's sometimes something just as simple as that. To it, just it, to it's, to get the symptoms to start lessening. Yeah. The change can happen so fast. So fast. Because all you're doing is taking away what you were doing wrong. Right. 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 And and then of course, now with the supplements and some postural therapy, it'll get even better. Way better. And better over time. Way better. And and even more, maybe perhaps even more important. Now we pr protect ourselves from future pain. Now we're preventative, you know, and that's the point of our 120 day program is to fix you. But and then, then on you're day, on a maintenance. Yeah. yeah. On day 121, it's like you graduate into maintenance. Maintenance. Right. It's not like you do the 120 day program, you're done. And then you go back to you know, you stop it, you know, you're always going to need those 90 essential nutrients, your body isn't any different. Mm -hmm. So this is, you know, a lot of people don't understand it's a lifetime commitment. Don't, you know, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Yeah. But, um, you, you know, once you stop the poor four foods, there's not going to be a time when you're going to be able to eat pizza and bread again unless it's gluten-free and you have to realize that it's, it's like, Oh, maybe someday I can have oil again, or maybe someday. No, no. It's like, make you, this a part of your lifestyle and you, you gotta, will find other things. You got to have the funeral. Yeah. You know, I don't think people realize that. Like I I've given up those dreams of maybe someday I can eat like a normal person. And, and when I look at what a normal person eats, I'm like, no, I don't want to eat like a normal person. I like I, eating the way I'm eating. Um, I think it was two weeks ago. I had painters at the house. And if you've ever seen painters at a house, it's a big magilla. Everything gets. Oh, yeah. There's cloths and the ladders. House, the house yeah. is shut down. Okay. Right. Here I am looking for lunch. Now, I don't, I don't eat my first meal until 1231 in the afternoon. Same with me. So I'm, go I'm going down in the kitchen to get my lunch. And I'm like, okay, my kitchen is shut down right now. Mm. I'm in a predicament. So I said, what am I going to do? I said, I got to go to a restaurant. Um, I haven't been to a restaurant in years. I don't eat at restaurants. It's one of my rules. So, okay, I got to make an exception here. So what am I going to do? I said, you know, Chipotle is a good idea. Okay, I can get a bowl of something. I walk in. And then it dawns on me. Oh, no, they probably cook with oil. All of it. I say, hey, do you guys cook oil? Yeah, we do. But we do healthy. Uh, no, thank you. I walked out. I'm out. I said, OK, let me go to a, uh, one of those cheap steakhouses. I think I went to Chili's. At least you can get a grilled something grilled. Right? I sit down. Guy comes over. Hey, what would you like? I go, I want a ribeye steak with nothing else but butter. Please just cook it in butter. Do not cook it with oil and no sauces. 
He goes, just a steak? You don't want the potato? No, nope, just a steak. Just a 12-ounce steak. Came back 10 minutes later, 15 minutes later with my steak. I ate it. It was 15 bucks. That was it. You, you know, I had to make a concession, but it's not like I went into the restaurant and said, ah, oh, well, I can, because I'm here, I can have the poor four foods. I can have oil. I can have gluten. Just one time? Yeah. No. No, yeah. you, 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 you stick with the plan always. And you feel good about it. You know, you right. walk out and you say, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I pulled that off, you know. I met a woman the other day. She says, why, she said, why are you single? She was like, <laughs> she was really confused. She's like, you're a doctor, you're this, you're that. Why are you single? I said, because I don't go to restaurants. <laughs> I don't go out. Right. Yeah, that's same with me. I mean, I don't go out anymore. You know, sometimes I'll go to a, an event, but I've already eaten. You know, I don't go there to eat. I'll have a, a, you know, a club soda or a cranberry juice or whatever, but. Yeah. yeah and, and, and if you go to a picnic or something, you just bring your own food. I let, when I go to a family event, you know, last, last April for Passover, I, I went to my cousins. I brought, I brought the Instapot with me. I cooked up, a, I, I cooked up a chicken. I brought enough for anyone else that wanted some. And people like my food better than the food that was served <laughs> because it was, it, it was people simple. kept, people kept asking, well, would you spice it with, how do you, nothing, nothing. It's just being cooked with moisture. So it changes the, <clears throat> it changes it. It, it, makes right. it, you know, meat is just better in a, in a pressure cook. Right. And, but, you know, I just say all that to say that, you know, you, you're creating a lifestyle here. If you get with us, you're creating a lifestyle. Right. There's no magic pill over here. Right. And, and look, I'll be honest. Sometimes it is difficult to go to, if you want to be social and you want to hang out with people, it's difficult to go to a restaurant with other people who are eating normal, you know? Um, and, and, you know, it's you're it's i don't know how to say it but you're living a different lifestyle than most normal quote unquote normal people live you know and you got to be prepared to maybe take some flack for that yeah absolutely i, I used to tell clients even 10 years ago be a unicorn amongst horses right oh that's be a proud good of one. it be yeah. proud of it be proud of it. In and fact, I think Keisha, one of my oldest clients who's still around now, her Instagram is unicorn amongst horses. Man, no, that's a good way to think about it. But, but before we get to the questions, let's wrap up this, this yeah. whole joint pain. And there's a, there's a few, quite a bit of questions. Oh, good, good. Well, yeah, let's just wrap it up. So the short and long of it is joint pain, arthritis, systemically comes from muscle dysfunction <clears throat> and then when you and then some nutritional um deficiencies as well hard tissue soft tissue if it's autoimmune then it's gut right and and now when you when somebody let's say they come to the clinic and they want to get their n ray obviously or their p ray they're informed already that one of the symptoms that they have is arthritis. One of the symptoms that they have is joint pain. That's all part of the intake, correct? So it's, you know, so this is all taken care of uh, once you come to see us. So I think the best thing I could recommend to people is, again, like we do every week, start, start right with the clinic, start with the book start to uh, take an N-ray, take a P-ray book, and book then is decide. One. Then an N-ray, we're, we're, we're rebranding that as a discovery call so that it doesn't sound as clinical. Clinical. So that, yeah, that's the steps. You, you get in, get into that book, do a discovery call with a health coach, get your P-rays done. You're on your way. Okay. 
and that's good. So uh, again, if you have any other questions, I just got one from the group, a joint in video hell. Good, good. All right. So we'll be right back after this brief message. Hold on. Have you read peace over pain yet? This short but powerful book reveals how to eliminate chronic pain and or illness faster than any other known therapeutic approach. Download the Peace Over Pain book for only $4.95 and gain instant access to the ebook version, audiobook version, and a video training with Dr. Reese. Go to peaceoverpain.com and start reading or listening right now. This is the information you've been praying for. All right. And I'd just like to remind people that the Peace Over Pain book is available on Amazon or in the peaceoverpain.com or in In the group, in the group, the Peace Over Pain for free Peace Over Pain Facebook group. All you have to do is join. Uh, So just remind that and also want to remind people to like, share and subscribe on all social media platforms. We're on Spotify, YouTube, uh instagram so you can uh follow us and see what's going on during the week because dr reese definitely posts some cool stuff up on his uh ig you know i'd be triggering people i know so we got questions from last week why don't we start with them i know you said you had a few yeah let me let me get this person first because this okay because this is about what we're talking about okay go ahead no no okay it's from patricia and this is This is 26 minutes ago. She just entered the group. She says, Kevin, after another night of excruciating pain, I woke up to your information on Facebook. One year ago, I had a hernia surgery and have never been the same. A ligament was cut and I'm just learning how it harmed my posture. I will order the book today. I'm desperate to get started. What are your thoughts and recommendations to quickly get started? And in this situation, is there any hope for me? So Patricia, yeah, just what we just said, book, hop on the phone with Coach Amber or Coach Tamara, who's brand new. Hello, Tamara. Do a discovery call. Then we do your P-rays. This is all for free. And once you do those three things, then we know all your root causes. Once we know your root causes, then we know what to do to reverse them. Right. So is there hope for you? Yes, of course. I'm not a big fan of the word hope because it's a projection to the future. All I can tell you is we fix people. <laughs> and, you know, start right away today by throwing away all your gluten. Oil. Yeah. Yeah, I ran- you can start right away. That's step one. Get off the four. poor four foods. Get off the poor four foods immediately. Right. You know, and you know, tomorrow we're looking for people that want to put the effort in. I had someone come to me the other day in horrible pain, horrible. And I swear within five minutes, she's like, how much does it cost? What's the time commitment? What's the blah, blah, blah? What's the blah? Like, let's, let's slow down here. You're looking for a magic pill. Otherwise, you wouldn't be asking me for these, these questions. Mm-hmm. There's no magic pill here. No. You have to actually do work. Oh, but I've been to every doctor. Da, da, da. No, 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 no. <laughs> this isn't every doctor over here. That's why you're here, right? Yeah, this is different. This is different, okay? Just like there was the civil rights movement and then there was Malcolm X, okay? It's just different. <laughs> this, there's, there's a good, right? You're Malcolm X <laughs> by any means necessary, right? If, if you, you know, there's no magic pill. You can go to a chiropractor, you get no homework. You go to the osteopath, you got no homework. You go to your primary care physician, there's no homework. You go to the osteo surgeon, osteo, um, osteo, uh, osteopedic 
orthopedic <laughs> you know what surgeon. I mean? Right. There's no, there's no homework. It's just, okay, we're going to inject you and we're going to give you pills and we're going to this. And then they do send you to a physical therapist sometimes. But yeah, the physical again, therapist physical does therapist, the work. Physical therapist will last six weeks and send you on your way. Yeah. And this, and what you don't realize is you're going to need continuous. This is, you know, and, and it's, you know, it's like anything else. It just becomes a habit. You know, you just have to be willing to accept it, change some of your limiting beliefs, and then it just becomes a lifestyle and a habit. And you don't even think about it anymore. Right. You know, uh, but it takes time. It's like anything else, developing good habits. All right. Did you have any other questions you wanted to get to now? Or do you uh, want well, me to- just a shout out to Coop saying hello and Anne Damsky Lee saying good morning. And Keisha's here saying, hey, that was me. She's talking about the uh-huh. uh, unicorns amongst horses. And Tina is here as well. So yeah, carry on with your questions, please. Okay. Very cool. All time. right. This, yeah, this comes from Lucy on Facebook. What causes frequent urination? Yeah. Is it different for men and women? I'm interested in this because what yeah. I'd like to know is what is defined as frequent? How, are, how much are we supposed to urinate? Yeah, I mean, there's no <clears throat> elimination is when you need to eliminate. So there's no limit to it. There's no number to it, really. In my experience, the biggest cause of frequent urination is we're right back to muscle dysfunction. When you have a, a post- there. Yeah, when you have a posterior pelvic tilt, so when your pelvis is pulled down from the back, the front is up and it's banging up against the bladder. Uh-huh. So uh, my dad, I'm always mentioning dad, you know, Every single time he gets up from his lazy boy chair and every single time he comes home and gets out of that car, he runs to the bathroom because he has a posterior pelvic tilt. He's sitting down. It's pushing up against the bladder. Now, obviously in some men, there could be a prostate thing going on too. So it also could be nutritional. And but, that comes from the prostate pushing up against, yeah, right. The prostate get enlarged and pushes up against the thing, right? Yep. But in, that, I would say muscle dysfunction, maybe with some soft tissue nutritional deficiencies, would create the peeing. Or your body's just trying to get rid of something. What if it, you drink? You drink a lot of water, you know? Yeah. Well, it it depends too, you know. If you pee a lot for three days, your body is trying to get rid of something. Eliminate. If you right. pee a lot every day continuously, then I'd go to the muscle dysfunction. All right. So there you go. There's a root cause of frequent urination. All right. Let's get back to the next one. Okay. This is from Carrie on Facebook. This is a, uh, an interesting question. How do you help people virtually? I don't get it. So obviously she's used to going to a doctor, looking at her, touching her and looking in her down her throat and all that kind of stuff. And she's wondering, how do how does this work? How does it work virtually? It's like yeah, telemedicine. So we don't need to touch anybody. Nutrition can be, a protocol can be given. And it's the exact same thing with postural therapy. We do your P-ray. We look at your muscle dysfunction. Then we create a protocol of exercises that correct that muscle dysfunction. Mindfulness also can be verbalized. So in our program, everything is virtual. You can hop on the phone, talk to a coach. There's there's lots of videos and your postural therapy is delivered right through the app, right on your phone or your laptop. So we don't need to touch anyone. Right. Uh, if you wanted to check your vitals, you can do that with your iPhone these days. And if you need blood work, I mean, you get that done physically at your yeah, lab, can, but you get the results through email. I can order blood work and you can go to your local, you know, lab, yeah. phlebotomist and 
yeah, the lab reports come in through the email. So it, it literally, there's, there's, there's no reason to touch anyone. And if you have, if you need care immediately, urgent care, emergency care, then you know where to go. You, yeah, medical and, monopoly are experts in that. So go see them when the time is right. And even the medical monopoly is starting to embrace telemedicine and now. They're, well, they're, you know, it's a different, you know, it's virtual though. A lot of, they don't even need to see you. Well, I think, I think the confusion, Joe, is when people have bone and joint issues, mm. they're, they're very programmed for chiropractors, yeah, yeah, yeah. chiropractors and osteopaths. Oh, they feel around my spine and they do this and they do that. We don't have to do that. We have the P-Ray. I don't need to touch you. Right. I need to see you. And so look at our P-Rays on the website and you'll see, you know, we can zoom in, we can see the joints, we can see this, we can see that. That's all I need. Right. Okay. So that pretty much explains it. All right, let's get to the next one. All right, this is from Sky Vaughn on IG. How do we best give ourselves all of the minerals our body needs? This has proven to be an expensive endeavor. For yeah, me. well, um, you got to make money. If you don't make enough money, you will be unhealthy. There's no way around it. So minerals are quite affordable, actually. Uh, we have a mineral solution that's only, I think it's 25 bucks last year a month. But that's just minerals. And minerals right. could be a game changer, but the 90 essential nutrients are what you want. There's only 60 minerals out of 90 I say only, I mean, that's the majority, but you know, it can get expensive. There's no way around that. Yeah. No, you gotta I make the money. It, it's like, I tell people your health should be number one, physical, mental health, number one. But your financial health needs to be number two. <laughs> like it, you need a quality financial health because we live in a jungle called capitalism. Right. So right. that's like being in a tribe, living in the wilderness and not having spears yeah. <laughs> or not having knives. Yeah. So if you want to survive on, in this jungle and you want to improve your health, you want to buy the healthy food, buy the grass fed stuff, buy right. the organic fruits, you know, and you, you, you know, you want the supplement plan, high quality. Yeah. I mean, there's no way around it. I would love to say, Hey, you eat mineral rich foods, but unfortunately, even if you did go out and eat beets and, and eat the spinach and eat the things that are supposed to be high in minerals, it, you can't, you can't with confidence say, that it, ha it contains all that anymore. And it's a shame we live in a world like that. But, you know, it would and be Joe, nice to give her an inexpense, but there's no other solution. And Joe, there. I had Jack LaLanne's wife on my other podcast. Yeah. And we talked about that. Jack used to say the soil is depleted and that's why we need the supplement. He was saying that in the 1930s. Yeah. 1930s. Here we are, 90 years later, the and soil's even worse. Yeah. Because there's almost 8 billion people on this planet. How many people were there in 1930? Yeah. There Someone was Google a that. Of that. Someone uh, Google that. that. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, even if you ate dirt, you wouldn't get, you wouldn't get the minerals, unfortunately. No, because the minerals... Even if there's minerals in that area, it would be deep. Right. Way deep. That's why trees do well because their roots go deep. But and they you, suck up the minerals. What yeah, you you're growing wood? potatoes. You're growing potatoes and, and spinach. No, that's going like this deep. Yeah. So, you know, that's it's, it's it, it, that's the solution. You do have to supplement. 
Okay, um, this is more of a comment from Rosa on Facebook, and she has she says I have faith in everything you say. I'm feeling so much better since I have been taking my essential nutrients and avoiding the four bad foods, and it's all so easy to do. Well, look at that. See, there you go. Good exactly. Job, Rosa. Yeah, Stay on it. And I can say from my own personal experience. Uh, what is your advice for people? This is from Lucy on Facebook. What is your advice for people who are dealing with the after effects of COVID? For example, sent loss of taste, balance issues, brain fog, et cetera. So this person obviously had COVID. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you got to get off the poor four foods and you got to bring, get those 90 essential nutrients and you got to up your antioxidants. That's it. That's the formula. We have a, we have a supplement that has 160,000 ORAC. That's a lot of antioxidants. And so that's what I would put someone on. They just the antioxidants are going to go to work for you and start neutralizing everything that needs to be neutralized. And, you know, yeah, some people get that, what they call long haul COVID. Yeah, long COVID, they call it. Yeah, it's not fun. It's almost like Lyme disease in a way. It's like you're just stuck with like, but they were unhealthy to begin with. You have to understand that. And people don't want to hear that. People don't want to hear that. COVID is only going to knock down unhealthy people. Otherwise, you're going to have it. You're going to have the flu for a week and be done with it, basically. Right. Some people, maybe even a day, some people, a few hours, you know, I, I could swear I've gotten COVID a few times. I never got tested, but I, I have felt like crap a few times over the last two years and it only lasted two hours. Yeah. That's what tends to happen to me too. As soon as I notice something wrong, it, it doesn't last, you know, and again, if you're if you're if you're keeping your body in good shape yep. with the nutrients and, and all that um yeah and the antioxidants that's yeah you should have the ability to fight it off that's right you know and uh but we're getting into a little different territory there okay so um this is from patty sinclair do we need to reserve differently in order to see kevin beforehand or just arrive early with tickets for November 5th. So this is about your live event. Yep. This person obviously wants to see you ahead of time to talk to you. Um, yeah, she you might be, she might be talking about Kelvin. 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 Oh, Kelvin, the, the, oh, Kelvin. Sorry, I misread that. Kelvin, the. Uh, yeah, Kelvin is opening up doing a sound healing concert. So yeah, you would just come early. Okay. He starts at one eleven. 111 on November the 5th. Will we be on air that day as well? We'll probably run a replay because I, I can't talk that much. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't, yeah, okay. Well, I'll, be ta sense. I'll be talking a lot that afternoon. Right, right. Okay, so if you want to come see Kelvin before Kevin's uh, presentation on the 5th, come early. All right, this is from Corey on IG. Um, this is a response to a menopause video that you put out. Now, I'm not privy to that, um, but she says, who wants to have your cycle in the 60s and 70s? Is there a benefit? Uh, okay. I'm a grandmother at 42, and I don't need any more babies. <laughs> uh, just wondering. So you put out a uh, menopause video talking about how you can... Yeah. Why no. it happens, or what is it? No, I put out a menopause video about how women used to go into menopause in their 60s and 70s now they do it in their 30s 40s and 50s because oh. of fat deficiency because of nutrition deficiency cholesterol deficiency and so she's responding to that oh um, <clears throat> and she's saying it's a good thing to get rid of it early yeah well she's half joking there i think um, right <laughs> but no i i think if i was a woman yeah i wouldn't I wouldn't want to go into menopause until I'm like 65. Well, why would I want to go into it at 35? Like, what kind of nonsense is that? 
well, I don't know. I've never had the curse, but apparently it's not very fun. <laughs> and if you can get rid of that, you know, I think that's what she's saying. If you don't want to have kids anymore, why do you want to deal with the curse? That's what they call it. Um, and I got to say, that's probably the worst part of being a woman, not being a woman, not knowing. But I would say if I were a woman, I would say that would be the worst part of it, that monthly visitation. But um, anyway, uh, here's yeah, another one. If, yeah, go ahead. If, if you're topped off on nutrients and you're healthy, that cycle should be like, no problem. Yeah, it's just messy. Um, so, okay, this is from Hummingbird Farm 707 on IG. In response to the menopause video, but maybe not. Uh, it says, you mentioned olive oil. Is olive oil okay? I thought that was okay. Uh, yeah, so in the menopause video, I mentioned olive oil, right? Or I mentioned oils in general. The reason is because they become oxidized and then it becomes free radicals. It goes into your body and creates damage. And that contributes to the menopause. And so this person, of course, like everyone usually does, is perplexed about oils being in our poor four foods. Right. And everyone's like olive oil, but I thought it's good. Well, olives are great. Just not the oil of olives. Right. Olives is a whole food. Olive oil is not a whole food and it's being exposed to the air. So no, olive oil is not good. And anyone that's consuming oil of any kind should stop. Right. And again, if, if you have any questions about this, all you need to do is go Google oil oxidation. It is a real thing. There are charts that will tell you how much each oil oxidizes if you really want to know i mean don't just take it from us i'm one of those i went and did my own research because i was skeptical at first too but when i did my own research i found it to be true uh different oils yes have different properties and different oils oxidize at different rates but oil oxidation is a real thing it's not something made up. Uh, it's a real thing. And you got to realize that. And again, I said it before, it happens in car engines. That is why you have to change your oil. That is why they invented synthetic oils. Joe. Oxidation. Tina left a comment and said that monthly visitation is a blessing and a cleansing. Oh, so, well, that's why I always preface it and say, I wouldn't know because I have never had it. Right. But I've also heard other women say the opposite. Yeah. So I, I'm I think sure it depends, depends on, on the health, person. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. I think, Kevin, I think we are getting towards the end here. It's been a great show and I hope it really. Uh... No more questions? No, that's it. That's all, all the right. questions all right. that we have. Um, but we're getting towards the end. Did you have any last words for uh, our listeners? Um when does the Elaine Lelaine um, interview? Yeah, when does that come out on? I'm not your sure other what podcast. I'm not sure. Probably in a few months. But there is a clip about supplements in the soil and all that. So that will probably be floating around the next few weeks. Maybe we'll show that on the show. Maybe we'll show some. Clips now look look on the screen here. You see this guy or it could be a girl, you know, you see the pelvis? Yeah, I do. Okay. So that's what I'm talking about there. When, when that, your hip is the femur connected to the pelvis. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. muscle dysfunction will change the pelvis. It'll either push it up or push it down. And that plays a factor in our posture and in our pain. So We'll, we'll do a whole episode on that. Probably. Yeah, we'll keep talking about posture. I think, like we've always said, that is the one piece that people, I don't think, realize is probably the most important piece. Yeah. You know, and yep. uh, again, it's not a hard thing. It's something you, if you do yoga, you'll easily be able to do the exercises. If you do, you know, it's not hard. It's not something that's hard. So uh, before we go, I did, John, would just mention uh, Inner Peace with Dr. Reese. You can find that on Spotify or YouTube. Please like, 
share, subscribe to our YouTube page, um, subscribe to Spotify, and please share this around to your friends. Spread the good word, you know, so maybe we can have more and more healthy people in this world. All right. So we will see you all next week. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks. Thanks for watching the Peace Over Pain podcast live inside our clinic's Facebook group. Be sure to submit a question or comment for next week's show at peaceoverpain.com. Also, perform some goodwill and tell a friend in pain that you found their solution. Refer them to the Peace Over Pain podcast and the Peace Over Pain book and help them move closer to their miracle.